about two thirds of the way through, and then there can be time for questions and answers. If while I am talking, if there is a question that's just burning in you and you just really want to ask it right now, go ahead and feel free to, to engage. So I want to start off a little bit with who I am and what I do. Um, I am now an author, a life coach, a facilitator of workshops, and a, an inspirational speaker. I have come from a 26 year long career in accounting, so it's kind of a big jump from accounting to healing and wellness. It's kind of like people are like, how did you get here? Well, my story, about 14 years ago, I hit my rock bottom. I was gonna go through um, a divorce. I was going to have to be a single mom, and everything in my life was just turned upside down. So it was pretty rough for me, especially with what my thought process was at the time. So I got so low that at one point, I didn't even want to live any longer. And when I got through that point, what I realized was, no, I'm just not gonna live how I've been living. I'm gonna start seeking out my wellness, and not just what society says, looks good, feels good, and how I ought to be. So I began to seek my wellness and every area of my life was changed from my mind, my body, my relationships, my finances, everything just got turned upside down. As I began to seek my wellness though, I noticed not only did I survive, because that's really what I wanted, I just wanted to survive initially. I was in so much pain, but I began to thrive. And when I thought back even with my career in accounting, I kept feeling like, you know, I'm really great. I do this well, but I just keep feeling like there's something missing. There's something more I ought to be doing. And so that's when I discovered my passion to really empower other people to live their best lives. I knew so many people who had gone through things. I mean, in life, we may go through all sorts of things. You just never know. Um, but they but they would, they would, they would survive, and they would go through life day by day but they really weren't thriving and they were in a lot of pain. And so I wanted people to start feeling what I was feeling from going to the point, the low point I was at, to getting to the point I actually felt joy. That was pretty awesome. So I entered into the world of wellness. Now with my financial journey, as I said, I went from a two income household down to a one. And that was a really crazy, scary time for me. And I had to look at how am I spending my money? What am I doing with it? And what I discovered was, what was the most important was how I was thinking about all of it. Because I had in my mind from a little kid that money was kind of an evil thing, and I wanted to have enough money because I really liked food and I like having a roof over my head. <laughs> but I didn't want so much money that I felt like I was gonna lose my relationships. Because as a little one, I had an uncle who just really wasn't very good with relationships, and when he would go for divorce, I wouldn't see my cousins anymore. And I said, why is this happening? I want to see my cousins. I don't understand why I keep losing my cousins when my uncle gets remarried. Got to be because this guy was the richest one in my family. So it was like, it's got to be the money. He's a nice guy. It's got to be the money. So this is a little kid trying to rationalize. I didn't realize that I had carried that into adulthood. And there I was going through a divorce myself and really needing to do something different with my money. And that's when the light came on, that it wasn't just about the normal things people talk about in personal finance that we need to understand about money. I had to also understand that money was energy and that I could either attract it or repel it. So I've already talked about what I'm going to offer in this seminar. You will hear some of those petty things about um, saving money and spending money and how you earn money. We're also going to, I'm also going to discuss what it is you're thinking about money. And I'm gonna pose some questions for you to think about so it can help you connect to your cash even better. So we're gonna get started with the, the tips. First tip, evaluate how you think and feel about money. Question, you know, what do you think money is? Oftentimes people think of money as the green paper, the coins, that sort of thing. Well, what do you think money is? For, for other people, it's, it's everything. So for me, it was, it was good, but, but just not too much of it. When you think about money, how do you feel? Are you feeling lack or are you feeling abundance? 
do you believe that money is limited? Do, do you believe that it's limited? That oh, there's only so much money, and there's a handful of folks who really have the majority of it. Do you believe, like I did as a little one, that money is evil to get too much of it? <coughs> and then there are some people that they're like, you know what, if I hit the lottery and I get to hit that Powerball, that's all I need to it's everything. So for you, those are questions for you to ponder and ask yourself, where is it that you stand with money? And that's, that is a real big key on how you're connecting to your cash. Tip number two, understand that money flows and is abundant. There's, there's a law of exchange when it comes down to, to money. And it's happening all here at this expo today. There are those of you here who are finding products and services that can benefit you, that you're going to the various uh, exhibitors here and you're exchanging your money for what they are able to do to help you move forward, feel good, get up and stuff. So money, it does flow, it is abundant. These are some affirmations that come from the Creating Money book by Samaya Roman and Dwayne Packer. And the first one is, I am an unlimited being. I can create anything I want. I am an unlimited being. I can create anything I want. Number two, I picture abundance for myself and others. This one is a, is a key one for me. Um, even I have, now my children are 20 somethings and as they have gotten out of school and they are out into the workforce and they've been wanting to attract their these jobs that they know they have passion for and will be good at. Sometimes as moms, as parents, we start to worry about our kids, especially, you know, some of us for 20 something, it's like, oh my Lord, are they gonna ever get that job that pays them well and they can leave home? Are they ever gonna do that? Well, with this one, I started, I was in meditation, and that was one of the things that came to me. Picture them already there. Picture their abundance. So I picture my, I picture abundance for myself and for others. I'm the source of my abundance. A lot of times it's about what we're thinking and feeling, and then not just what we're thinking and feeling, but what kind of deliberate action are we taking towards that abundance? And knowing that abundance is beyond just those dollars in our pocket. They're, they're, they're beyond just the, the job, the businesses that we may have. Our abundance comes all around us in, in other forms in terms of our health and our relationships, how good we feel in our minds, how good we feel in our spirits, how well our bodies can move. Our abundance goes even beyond the green dollars. My choices of possibilities are expanding every day. If you see that for yourself and be open to that, sometimes our abundance, our money is trying to flow into us, but it may not look like what we think. And I'll give you a personal example. I am, I am now in the field of healing and wellness full time. As of 2016, I retired from accounting. And in my mind, the way that I build this career and how I will earn my money today will be from my coaching services. It will be from my book sales, those sorts of things. But it's been interesting because not only has my choices and possibilities come from that, I've had some people contact me to even come back and do some consulting work in the areas of admin and accounting, some organizations. And I'm like, wait a minute, this wasn't what I was looking at. But you know what? One of the things I realized was is that not only could I bring wellness to a person, I could also bring wellness to organizations. So knowing that my choices and possibilities are expanding every day, there could be things knocking on your door trying to present itself. It just may look a little bit differently than what you got. And then I am an unlimited being. I can create anything that I want. Again, I repeat that one because this one is really, really big. And then my dreams come true. 
So whatever it is that you are believing for yourself, you're thinking for yourself, and what you are willing to take some deliberate action towards, just believe that your dreams come true. <coughs> then our tip number three, evaluate your energy regarding how you make and create money. When you think about that, do you feel free or do you feel confined? Do you feel like there's no way out? There are some people that I have known who they work a job, and it's a job they're really not that thrilled about, but they work there because they said, I need the money, but they're not seeing any way out of that. This is just the way, the way it is. So that's a really important question. Do you feel like there's no way out? If money wasn't a factor, would you do what you are doing right now? That's a big one. Money wasn't a factor, but you do what you're doing right now. Do you enjoy how you make your money? Do you enjoy it? That brings me to the next question. Do you appreciate how you create your money? Because sometimes we may not necessarily enjoy it, but we can appreciate it. Going into the latter part of my years in accounting, I can say I definitely appreciated it, even though I still had the desire to do what I am doing today. The reason I appreciate it is because it built me to get exactly where I am today. Where here I am, I'm able to, to do, I'm able to marry wellness as well as finance. Do you curse or bless how you make your money? Are you, are you, um, do you get up and say, oh my God, I hate, I hate this job, I don't want to go there? Do you, if you own a business, do you think, oh my God, Miss Smith is walking in, I'm hoping there's no Miss Smith here, but Miss Smith is walking in, oh my God, I can't, this woman drives me bananas, but hey, I need the money. So do you curse or bless how you make your money? And then finally, are you grateful for the money that you do have today? Even if you're wanting more, are you grateful for what you do have? Important questions. Tip number four, now these, this is what we can do with our money, spending wisely. With this one, we often hear about investments. You should invest in 401k, you need to invest in your retirement, you need to invest um, in a Roth IRA. When you hear, oftentimes you don't hear anybody say invest in yourself. Sometimes we look at what we do for ourselves, to build ourselves up, to move ourselves forward, that's an expense. Oh, I don't know if I should spend this money on this and that. Invest in yourself, whatever that looks like for you. It may be that you are investing in, um, you may be investing in coaching. You may be investing in a crystal um, that, that you feel drawn to. You may be investing in massages because maybe the job you work or things that you do, your muscles get sore and you need to invest in yourself. But just remember that. Look at yourself as an investment as well. Bargains, why pay more for something than you have to? You know, look for bargains and respect um, your money. Looking at needs, needs versus wants. Oftentimes there's, there's things that we really need and then there's stuff that, that we really want when we're spending wisely. With insurance, um, you know, getting those insurances that are really the, the essential insurances and not, not just some of the ones that are out there that are okay, but they may not necessarily be exactly what you need. But making sure you protect your home, your dwelling, um, with renter's insurance or with homeowner's insurance, insurance, protecting your auto, having health insurance, and then finally life insurance. And if you're over the age of 60 looking at long-term long-term care insurance. Purchase only from vendors you understand. I tell people this all the time. If you're buying something, if someone says, oh yeah, you need to get, you really need to get um, life insurance. If you don't understand what this person is saying, find someone that you can understand exactly what they are talking about because you may not get expert insurance or whatever it is that they're selling, but it's your money that you are giving to them. You need to understand where it's actually going. And if it sounds like a bunch of gibberish and they can't break it down so that you get it, then find someone who can do that. Because in every industry, if you really know it, 
you can break it down to where a child can understand. So make sure you purchase from Betty you can understand. And then finally, debt elimination. You know, whenever we have debt, we're selling our future. Because we're saying, hey, for the next three years, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you $300 a month. Or whatever that is. So when we don't have the debt, of course, we own our futures back. Tip number five is saving smartly. Looking at a baby emergency fund, if you make um, over $20,000 a year, we're talking $1,000, and you make under $500. Full emergency fund, that is three to six months of your needs. Um, if you're in business, that can bump up to even eight to nine months. Saving for college, that could be for yourself, that could be for your children. Um, even when, when kids get grants or scholarships or financial aid through loans, college can still be pretty <coughs> expensive. Because they still eat. I don't understand. I can't, even with my children, I'm thinking, can I just buy these groceries? But I, they have to still eat, unfortunately, sometimes. <laughs> then saving for retirement. Um, you know, for what it is that you're going to want to do um, with your retirement. Saving for big purchases. Years ago, um, my mother did this, and perhaps some of your grandparents did this too, or parents, is they had saving funds where they knew a big purchase was coming up, so they just saved money. They're like, okay, I'm gonna need a new car, so I'm gonna just start saving now for that. Or I'm gonna go on that trip. I, I, I really like to travel, so um, but maybe they're gonna take that dream trip to Jamaica, and so they're gonna start saving now for that. That way, when those big purchases come, you just, you already have the money saved. And then I call it a smart percentage. Save a smart percentage. The rule of thumb has always been save 10% of your income. What I say is save a smart percentage because if you are someone who, say you have four kids in college, that 10% might be a little bit, be a little bit tough. And even if you save it, they're probably gonna come get it from you. <laughs> so, so you gotta save that smart percentage. Maybe if you have those kids in college, maybe your smart percentage is 1%. But you're saving something. If you're the college student, and I don't see, I don't, I don't know if there's any of you here in the room, but if you're the college student, you're still living at home with your parents, and you, you're done, and now you have a job, you're working full time, Maybe your percentage needs to be more like 50%. So then that way you can start saving up to have your own your own nest. So that smart percentage, it can range depending on your circumstance. Tip number six, we always hear about giving. Give, give your money, give your money, give your money here, there. There's different charities, there's, there's churches, there's um, all sorts of places to give money. <coughs> Give from love and faith versus fear and obligation. People don't normally put that part in. But when you're giving, it's about the energy. Because again, it's exchange. Money is energy. You're doing an exchange when you are giving money. If you are exchanging fear and obligation, well, I know I'm supposed to do this, so let me go ahead and give you, I'm going I'm to give you this 50. Oh, God, why am I have to give you $50? I'm going to give you $50. Mm -hmm. I've just exchanged, not just $50. I've just exchanged my energy of fear and obligation. Yep. And it's going to be, it, and that is what comes back. So when you can give from love and faith, you're going to get back love and faith. And that energy exchange is, is much better. And then also have healthy boundaries because there's some, there's some bleeding hearts. Some of us are bleeding hearts and Oh my gosh, this person really needs it. And oh, well, I could, I could give a little bit more. And then we hurt ourselves. Or we also sometimes hurt that person because now instead of us empowering them, we're enabling them. Because they, 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 they're like, oh, they're a bleeding heart. Let me go and give a sob story. Because now I can get even more out. Make sure there's some healthy boundaries that you're not enabling someone to continue to stay where they are when they need to move forward. So tip number seven, create a cash flow statement. And I like to call it cash flow statement. Some people like to call it budgets, but budgets sound uh, very restrictive. Even I, as a former accountant, hmm, budgets, 
they get to be, I, I don't particularly like the word, I like the word cash flow standing because again, money flows and there's an energy to it. And the cash flow statement, I, I'm a little bit bossy too at times. I get to tell my money what to do. This is this every dollar I have, this is where you're gonna, where you're, where I'm gonna spend you, this is where I'm getting it from. So you get to tell your money what to do. Your cash in, where you're getting your money from. It doesn't matter whether it's coming from a job, whether it's coming from something you sold on Craigslist, or the kind of cash <coughs> coming from your business. Any cash you're getting in, you put it on that cash flow statement. And then it's your cash out. Well, where are you going to get it? What are you going to do with it? Are you going to save it? Are you going to spend it? Are you gonna, what are you going to do with it? And so any cash out, whether that means um, you're going to put 500 in the bank for savings, anything that you are going to spend money on, make sure that it is out of your cash out. And then the two are equal. So say for instance, you have $2,000 that's coming in and your normal expenses, the normal things that you spend money on, it's only 1,500 bucks. You're like, cool, I got $500. That is cool, but what are you gonna do with it? Decide you know, what it is that you wanna do with that 500. Are you gonna want to put it towards your sinking fund because you're gonna go on a great trip to Jamaica? Are you gonna put it into the college fund, because now those kids are getting ready to go to college, or maybe they're three and four, so you're saving now. Are you going to invest in yourself because, hey, you know, this, this expo is coming up, and I know there's going to be some great vendors, and I want to go spend some money there. I want to splurge. I want to be able to do some things for me. I'm going to invest in me. Decide what it is you're going to do with that money, and you tell it what to do. Because what happens is when you don't, it finds a way to go somewhere anyway. And sometimes you'll look around and go, wait a minute, I thought I had this $500. Now I'm making it down to 200 You don't know what happened to 300 Or it's just all gone because you didn't tell them what to do. This kind of, this helps you to deliberately put your money in the flow that you want it to go. So those are seven tips to connect to your cash. And before I move on, I'm going to move into a meditation. I'm going to bring the lights down and move you into a meditation. But before I do that, I will have a question and answer session after meditation. I just want to make sure, though, that there's no questions or comments that you have burning before we go into this meditation. 